Hello everyone, speaking to the camera after a long time again, better late than never. So I'm Sambit PhD, I have this channel, my original name is Sambit Praharaj. I make videos on studying and living in Netherlands, Europe and all over Germany. In this video, we will discuss my experience of getting an EUPR. Recently, I received my EUPR in the month of January 2022, not long back. So in this video, we'll go through what are the different steps to get one. First, let's discuss the basic criteria to get one. First criteria is five years of continuous stay in a specific EU country. The EUPR is issued by that country. So if I'm living continuously in Netherlands, then I get the EUPR from the Dutch government. If I stay in Germany, suppose, then I get EUPR from Germany. Study period in this EUPR is always considered as half. While uh, for the Dutch PR, don't confuse it because many people ask me, is calculated as full. Also, if you have some job search time or permit after study, then it is not counted at all for counting the total period of stay for EUPR. So in that five year stay, your job search will be counted as nil. In my case, I studied from 2015 to 2017 as a master student in computer science. So those two years were counted as one year in my case. You can always refer to the official website to get more information from the IND. I will link it in the description below to know everything about EUPR. And I have also made many videos on that. You can always check them. It will be flashing on the screen somewhere on either of these corners where you can know uh, like what are the requirements for the PR. I have also made interviews with other students who got PR. You can apply online or you can make a paper application to the IND. In my case, there was some error. Uh, something happened. I could not apply online. So I made a paper application, but obviously you can apply online. And in this website, you can find the roughly the application fee is around 200 euros now from the Netherlands and it varies from country to country. So basically another criteria is that uh, you will need to pass the local language and some knowledge about the society in which you are living in. So when I passed in around May or June 2021, at that time the level of all the exams was A2. But recently they have changed it to B1 from January 2022. So that's why it's a good idea to check the website. And for the language exams, it is conducted by Duo, which is like an education organization in the Netherlands. So I'll also put that website in the description below for you to have a look. Having an active work contract is very necessary when you are applying uh, with at least more than one year of work contract remaining. If you have less than one year of work contract remaining, like in my case, I applied in October 2021 and my work contract was expiring in end of Feb 2022. So I had less than one year work contract. Then what happens is you should have at least, if you have less than one year contract remaining, you should have at least worked three years before when you apply for the permit EUPR. You should have worked three years continuously without any break when you apply, the moment you make the application. So I had that because I was doing my PhD since 2017 September, 1st of September. So yeah, so that's why I didn't have any issue even though my work contract was less than a year. So these are the basic criteria that you need. What is the timeline of the application coming to the second point? So when you are close to satisfying the five year criteria, then it is better to start preparing maybe one or two years before because you can always giving the exam, preparing for the exam takes some time. So it's better to prepare for that. I would say six months to a year would be a sufficient preparation time for these integration exams or society exams, which test your knowledge about the Dutch society. This is purely based on my personal experience. As mentioned earlier, the level of the exams have been increased from A2 to B1. So better to start a preparation early. Uh, I started preparing for the Dutch exams, crash course 
A1 level from the Maastricht University in December 2020 and then prepared for all the A2 exams on speaking, reading, writing, listening, knowledge about the Dutch society. So these are the exams that we need to give in around May, June 2021. So there was like real intensive course and then my exams had like five to six months gap. But before that, I also had some small stints of basic Dutch and I was always trying to listen to uh, maybe some local newspaper or the train announcements, they help a lot in the reading and listening, which are much easier. I will talk about the exams, the Dutch Inbergeren exams or the integration exam in detail in another video. Then I applied for the EUPR, as I mentioned earlier, in October 2021. So, and it was ready in December 2020. Ideally, they say it's like three months or six months. I don't remember. They have the decision time period. But in my case, they already decided positively in December 2021. And then you book an appointment. And finally, when I was back from the vacation, I received it in January 2022. So what is the significance and value of this? What rights does it give you? Any difference with Dutch PR that I already mentioned before? And regarding the rights, Obviously, you have more mobility in the EU Schengen region, which recognize this EUPR. And you can also stay outside Netherlands for six years max if you have a EUPR. If you go out of EU with a EUPR, then you can stay max one year continuously, 12 months, without losing the EUPR from that country. So check the two PR videos that I mentioned earlier to know more about that. Uh, how different is it from getting a citizenship? This is what has been also asked by many people. Obviously, it doesn't allow you to vote or maybe work in certain sectors, sensitive sectors. But a PR uh, doesn't give you that much mobility as a citizenship would give you. So getting a citizenship uh, would be beneficial in that. Like if you want to have visa free access like the problem we have with the Indian passport that we need to apply visa everywhere. If travel is your main goal, then maybe you can go for it. And also one thing, my friends, keep in mind that uh, getting a citizenship time-wise is much more than getting a PR. So in that way, you lose flexibility because uh, what happens is that till the time you are not getting the PR, uh, sorry, the citizenship, uh, till that time you need to have a been registered in a certain residential address in the Netherlands. So you cannot leave because I'm talking about the citizenship or UPR from the Netherlands. So, and as I mentioned, it gives you mobility across the European Schengen region. Yes, that is true. You can move to any EU Schengen area which recognizes this UPR and you don't need a visa to go there if you have a UPR and then later apply for the permit after you have moved in there. So I will talk about this also based on my personal experience in another video in details what it means. You can move there, be it for job, freelancing, research, anything. So the final question, this video, should you apply for one? Should you? It depends on what you want to do in the future. Do you wish to settle permanently? Do you wish to move across EU and maybe settle later? So you need to answer these questions yourself before you decide whether you have a family. There are many factors that come into the picture. You can easily apply for citizenship, as I mentioned, after five years of continuous stay. But is it what you want? So applying for citizenship is much easier because your study period is counted as full, just like Dutch permit. So Dutch PR. So in that way, getting a UPR in terms of number of years of stay is more if you are coming as a student. So the reason I'm saying this is because when you apply for the citizenship, the whole process, as I mentioned, can take longer. And the thing is, the moment you apply from that day till the moment you receive the new passport and also leave the passport of, suppose in my case, leave the Indian passport, this whole thing can take one or more than a year. So always remember that it will cause like a stop in some future goals if you want to move to a better job in another country or depends on your plan. So I hope this video gave you some idea like how I got the UPR, what are the implications of that and what are the benefits of that? Should you apply for one? And don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, share this video. Till next video, goodbye from the Netherlands. See you again. Bye.